Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Duck Vong, world's number one weight loss surgeon, author of 13 books with two more on the way for you. This is video number two of our four-part series on obesity and money and how they are related. Have you ever said eating healthy is too expensive? Uh, I can't afford it. I have to stretch my dollars. I'm on a fixed income. See, that's a money issue, right? And I'm here to help you break free from that because what I realize is I can give you the perfect smoothie recipe. I can tell you the perfect things to cook. I can tell you everything you need to know about your weight loss surgery or about losing weight. But if you say, must be nice, Dr. Vong, but I can't afford those fresh fruits and vegetables. They're too expensive. I'm on a fixed income, etc. I mean, all that teaching is for nothing. Does that make sense? So what we have to do is let down our pride, let down our pride, uh, and deal with our money issues. And for those of you who are new to me, um, just remember I'm an Asian immigrant. No one grew up poorer than me. And then even as a surgeon, must be nice to be a surgeon, Dr. Vaughn, I lost it all in 2008 and nine due to the, to the real estate crash as well as Hurricane Ike destroying my community. So. I lost four, I would $4 million in debt. So in 2009, if you had $1, you had $4 million more than Dr. V, okay? You had $4 million more than Dr. V. And I lost it all, I did. And um, it wasn't, um, so, but, you know, by last year, 2018, nine short years later, I retired from surgery because um, of all the principles I'm gonna about to teach you. Cool. So let's get started. What are some of your false money beliefs? What are some of your false money beliefs? I need to connect money with obesity, okay? So what I'll do is I'll draw a line here for you, and this will be the false belief side, all right? And this will be uh, the result, obesity result. Okay. Okay, hope this is going to be helpful. Now, I'm gonna just run through these pretty quickly um, and we can discuss later, okay? Now the first one um, is specific for the weight loss surgery uh, community, all right? Um, and this is a Dr. Vong thing, so if you, if, you, <laughs> if you quote this, please credit the source, right? Please credit Dr. V, all right? The false belief is this, uh, money and Obesity are not related, okay? That is absolutely wrong, right? So I realize that money and obesity are completely related. They go together hand in hand. I mean, if you've ever said eating healthy is too expensive, that's a money issue, y'all, because there are plenty of people who eat healthy, who can afford veg fruits and vegetables. Does that make sense? And what happens is, especially in a developed country, right, we have studies that show this, you know, in um, first world countries, uh, okay, here it is, obesity is related to socioeconomic economic status. By that, I mean the um, poorer you are, more obese you are. So we have studies that show this now that in first world countries, the poorer you are, the more likely you are to be obese. Now, yes, there are skinny, people who are poor, but you keep that pattern up long enough, your risk of becoming obese is much higher. Does that make sense? Um, you're not gonna stay skinny living uh, in a poor uh, society, in a poor uh, way, because, because calories are so readily available, right? And we f trick ourselves into thinking that it's cheaper to have fast food. No, it's not. No, fast food is not any cheaper because you end up paying a lot more. Like, you can't go through KFC, can, I, I like KFC, don't don't judge, don't judge. I grew up in the South, so I like Kentucky, I like fried chicken, okay? It's a little secret. Don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody. But, like, you can't go through Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore for under 20 bucks, can you? 
really can't. And that was for like one person. Like uh, I, I ordered something for myself and it was like $16. I was like, dang, like you could really make a nice meal for 16 bucks. So we fool ourselves into thinking that. We think that junk food is cheap. It's not, it's absolutely, the reason why it's not cheap is because of this. It's absolutely unnecessary. By that I mean, let's say you're going shopping, right? And you decide to, to get Hostess cupcakes, uh, Twinkies, little Debbie cakes. Those are not nutritious. They will not nourish your body. You're spending money you don't need to be spending it on. It's the same thing as if, you, if you've ever yelled at your kids, you know, like don't waste your money on junk. Don't waste your money on video games. Don't waste your money on blah, 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 right? or don't waste your money on cigarettes. There's no difference, right? You don't need these snack foods, these snack foods, and they're not even really snack foods, right? They're not even really food. So what ends up happening is you're spending money you don't have to spend, so it actually ends up being more expensive. I hope that makes sense what I just said there, okay? Because we know now that the poorer you are, the more likely you are to be obese. That is showing up in studies, right? Um, so that's the, the direct consequence of this. And this is why, and I'm the only person, as far as I know, that says this, that money and obesity are related. Now this is super important, right? Because your success depends on this. Your weight loss surgery success depends on this, but your doctors aren't telling you this, your surgeons aren't telling you this, our Facebook groups aren't saying it, your, your secret groups are not telling you this, your support groups are not talking about this, all right? because we don't wanna talk about money. So what we have to do is let down our pride, let down our shield, and, and, and just get through these things. Now, now why, why is it so hard for us to talk about money? Well, what is one of the more common myths about money? What is some of the more common false beliefs about money? Money is, what do people say? Money is the root, what, of all evil. Not some evil, you know, all of it, really? Money's the root of all evil, really? So this is also wrong, right? This is absolutely wrong. But Dr. Vong, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible. Bitch, no, it's not in the Bible. That's not what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? That's right. The Bible actually says the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil, right? So, so one, the average person misquotes this all the time. And guess who says this, by the way? Everybody I've ever heard who says money is the root of all evil, who are they? These are all broke ass people. I promise you, next time you hear somebody say that, ask them what their bank account looks like. I promise you they're broke. They might have a thousand dollars in their bank account. They, they are barely getting by to the next paycheck. I promise you. I mean, I've, I've had the extraordinary privilege of the last couple of years because I've been on a self journey of self-development that I've met a lot of wealthy people. And they have never said this. They have never said this. None of them, none of them have ever said that. It's only the poor people who say m money is read of all evil. And they even have it wrong, all right? So let's take it over here. So what does that do? It justifies your obesity. Dr. Vong, that's rude. Well, yeah, well, but it's true. People say this to stay obese. Because I told you studies show that poor people have a tendency to be more obese. Just look around, right? Just go to Walmart. <laughs> Just go to a convenience store. Just look, look who's eating in fast food restaurants. They're gonna be more obese, right? So you're justifying this socioeconomic status because it means, no, 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 no. I don't want to be evil. I'm a good person. Well, that might or might not be true. You might be a dick. You might be an asshole. 
I don't know. Just because you sit there and say money is the root of all evil and make yourself feel better? Well, then why are you cheating on your husband? Why are you, you know? Why haven't you filed your income tax? Why? All sorts of reasons. Why did you call in sick to work today when you're not really sick? Why, why are you, you know, being abused by your spouse? Why are you yelling at your kids? Why do you have a bad temper? Right? Um, and even if this is true, even if it was true, your belief in that does not make you a good person. Does not guarantee you to be a good person. But what it does is it guarantees that you're not going to do anything about it. And therefore, you increase your chance of staying obese. I hope that makes sense. Yes? Yes? All right. Let's move on. What are some other false money beliefs? Other false money beliefs. Here's a good one. Money doesn't what? Grow on trees. Really? Money doesn't grow on trees. Einstein. Great. I'm going to tell you this is wrong. Absolutely. It totally grows on trees. Okay? So, I didn't believe it. But, it's totally true. Money does grow on trees. You just don't know what to plant. Right? You just don't know what to plant. Um, so, as I said, I retired last year at the age of 45 from surgery. I left it. I might go back to it, but for the most part, right now, I'm, I'm good. Now, some people are sitting there go, oh man, must be nice, made a lot of money as a surgeon. No, I didn't make any money as a surgeon. Surgery just doesn't, you know, for as much as I worked, it's not that good of a deal. I actually make money. I got to walk away because I make money from these videos, from my book sales, from my online courses, from your support, right? And, um... So I'll give you an example, like every month I wake up and Amazon, which is, you know, where I sell a lot of my books, they just deposit money into my bank account. Very regularly, either the 30th or the first of each month, I wake up and there's a check in, a deposit in my checking account. Now, I don't know about you, but that say, it seems like a money tree to me. Like my book, Ultimate Gastric Sleep Success, I don't have a copy, but... You know, that's nice. Now, I'm only telling you this because I'm going to show you how to do this. If you keep watching the next videos, I'm going to show you how to make your own money trees. Like, for example, these t-shirts. I'm going to show you how to make these t-shirts. you right. You, a lot of people don't realize I make, my, I make these t-shirts. Dr. Vong, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't want, I can't sit there and print. I don't know how to print t-shirts. I don't know, I don't want a gar garage full of boxes of t-shirts. Yeah, I don't either. I don't have garage full of boxes. I don't actually do the printing of these t-shirts. I just set up a Shopify store. Someone clicks order and whoever owns the printing press prints it off and ships it to you. It never goes through my hands. I don't have a room full of t-shirts. Does that make sense? So if I never actually see the t-shirt that's sent to you, but I wake up and there's a deposit in my bank account, what is that? You know, that sounds like a money tree, right? So money doesn't grow on trees. And what, this keeps you in an obesity attitude. Right? The result of thinking this way, it's an attitude, right? It's an attitude that does not serve you because it's just wrong. There are skills you can learn, right? So it's actually a lack of skills. And I'm going to show you these skills. All right? Put, uh, put FB, Facebook, in the comment section, if you know how to do a Facebook post, just put FB. Can you upload a picture to a Facebook post? Yes? 
Can you load a video to Facebook post? Yes. If you can do that, I can show you how to start your own t-shirt store. It's just not that hard. If you can do a Facebook post, I can teach you what you need to do to start making your own money trees, right? And it's a good thing, Dr. Vong, that's selfish. Why is that, like, why do people have this mentality? Somebody wanted my shirt. So comment if you like your shirt. It's a nice shirt. It remind, I pretty much wear this shirt every day now. Fear less. It reminds me, I want to be fear, I want to fear less so I can be more, so that I'm fearless, right? And other people want this shirt too. So, so it's an exchange. This was video number one, right? Like it's an exchange. You get a shirt, I get money. That's how this works. Every, the clothes you're wearing right now, you had to pay money for. So it, you understand, your clothes you're wearing right now, somebody made money on that. My question to you is that is this. Why can't it be you who gets the money? Why can't it be you? Why can't you start this business? It's not hard. It's not like the old days, right? You can write your own book. I guarantee you, whoever you're watching me right now, you have a book inside of you that you want to write. No, not your story. Nobody cares about your story. See, the broke people always tell me, Dr. Vaughn, I want to write a book. What's your book going to be about? Oh, it's about my story. Well, what about your story? You know, I've just, I've seen a lot in life. I can tell a lot of stories. Nobody fucking cares about your story. I mean, unless you're like Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk or Bill Gates, nobody cares about your autobiography. Oh, Michelle Obama, Oprah Winfrey. Nobody cares about your autobiography. Nobody cares about Dr. V's autobiography. They only care about what problem are you going to solve? You buy my Ultimate Gastric Sleep Success book because it solves a problem for you. Yes? You buy my weight loss surgery books, my green smoothie books, my, my salad recipe books, because it solves a problem for you. My new book's gonna be on weight regain. And I'm gonna give it away for free. How about that? I mean, how, like, is that not worth an exchange of value, right? And that's what I'm trying to teach you in this series. It's like, it's not greedy. You're exchanging value. I'm fixing a problem. So you're watching me. Don't write. Don't like, I'm going to write, tell my story. Don't tell your story. Solve a problem. And that's the value trade. Does that make sense what I'm saying? All right. It's a value trade. Okay. What other false money beliefs? Okay. I'll give you another one. Rich people are mean. Selfish. Etc. right? Rich people are mean, selfish, greedy. Rich people are greedy. Dude, this is so false. Listen, there are broke people who are, I almost said fucking mean. <laughs> there are broke people that are mean, that gossip, that hit their wives, that cheat on their spouses, that beat their kids. Aren't there, aren't there broke people who act like that? Aren't there broke people who will steal from you when you're not looking? Isn't it more likely the broke person is the one who's gonna steal from you? I mean, I never had a rich person try to break into my house, climb through a window when I'm asleep at night. That's usually a broke person who does that. Am I right? So why do we believe this? I mean, if, if your church burns down, and they are raising money to build a new steeple, who's gonna be the one who donates the most? It's the rich person who's gonna give the most. It doesn't make them any more important than what you give. That's the whole Jesus teaching about the woman who just gave everything she had, even though it was like just a dime, right? Give what you have. Now, if you have more, you can give a lot more. That's the point. That steeple, that church is not going to rebuild itself on nickels and dimes and good luck and hopes and wishes. Someone's got to pony up the money. Now, are there rich assholes? Yes, there are rich assholes. Of course. But there are also broke assholes. 
I'll tell you, there are more broke assholes than there are rich assholes, just because there's just more of them. You got to remember what I've been teaching you. The average person is broke. 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Two thirds of Americans are overweight. A third of Americans are obese, which means the average American is broke and overweight. 80% of Americans are disengaged from their job, which basically means they don't care whether or not they show up to work. And, and something like 25% actively try to undermine the business. 25% will actually try to undermine the store, the shop, the business. Isn't that crazy? So they're also unhappy. Over 50% of Americans have been divorced. Or, you know, most over 50% of marriages end up in divorce. So just because you're married doesn't mean you're happy. And what's the number one cause of divorce? It's not infidelity. It's not cheating on your spouse. It's not abuse. It's not verbal abuse. not mental abuse. It's money. You, the number one reason why marriages break up is over money. And I'm telling you this because it's a false money belief. Now listen, if you're like me, which most of you are, and you know, you are trying to get better, right? Like I'm always trying to get better. I want more money so I can help people. I can help my church. I can help charities that I love. I want more money so I can have better experiences, so I can take Eric on better trips, so I can provide private school for, for uh, Kizzy, right? But what happens if my partner was not on the same page? What if you married somebody and they believe that money is the root of all evil? And you're sitting there trying to hustle. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? you're gonna get divorced or you're gonna fail at your business. Now what happens if, if um, you have a score, you make some money finally on your business and you know you need to hoard it for more growth and she or he ends up spending it all because he has this, broke, this poor mentality that there's not enough and I better spend it while I can. This is what happens to lottery winners. Most lottery winners are broke again in two or three years because they don't have the right mentality, right? False money beliefs, okay? <clears throat> um, so what happens here? It keeps you obese because it limits your relationships. Your new relationships. Now, if you've been following me, you know that like um, I just got back from a mastermind in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It was not cheap. I mean, it's like $6,500 a person uh, for three days. And that doesn't include lodging. I had to pay for my own lodging and airfare. Okay, $6,500. But it got me around people. The average person there had $10 million business. Um, we had two people who made billion dollar exits. Billion with a B. Billion dollar exits from their company. I would not have access to these people unless I was there. You might have noticed that I walked the red carpet um, <clears throat> back in May with uh, Kizzy for Wishman movie premiere. I'm a small investor in this movie about the founder of Make-A-Wish Foundation, Frank Shankowitz, who's a friend of mine. I'm not telling you all this to brag, I'm just telling you because I had to give up this mentality so I can have access and, and start building relationships with these people. So I, I gave Kizzy, my daughter, who wants to become an actress now, she's just turned 13 this week, and she wants to become an actress, and she doesn't have to sit there and fantasize about walking the red carpet someday. And someday I hope to get to walk the red carpet. We did it in May. I mean, talk about giving your kid like their dream. What would you not do for your kid? If you're a parent, what? You would do everything for your child. Amen? Come on now. Even if you don't want to do this for yourself, how about your kid? Doesn't your, your son deserve private lessons if he's really good at piano or plays the guitar? Doesn't your daughter, if she really shows talent in dancing, get to have dance lessons? See, I didn't grow up with that. You know, we couldn't afford it. My dad worked really hard, but we just were too far behind. It wasn't until I was a junior in high school that I actually, we actually got a little bit comfortable where I actually 
um, stopped wearing uh, Goodwill clothes and hand-me-downs, and I actually could go to the mall. That was my junior year in high school. Um, but Kizzy doesn't have to wait. Oh, and then we didn't, for, for that movie premiere, uh, I met a guy, um, and he's like, dude, just stay on my yacht. I'm like, you have a yacht? <laughs> he's like, yeah, but don't judge, it's only 60 feet. I was like, 60 feet? He goes, but it's really cool. I bought it from, check this out, I bought it from the saxophone player from Pink Floyd. I'm like, I love Pink Floyd. He goes, yeah. The guy who owned it before me was a saxophone player. He just left it in terrible shape, so I got it for a good deal, but I've sunk a lot of money to repair it. He goes, just sleep on the boat. I'm like, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. How, how much? Like, I, He's like, no, it's, you can use the boat. Just come, He didn't charge me to sleep on his yacht. I'm telling you, rich people are the nicest, most giving people. And they know other rich people, and they can open doors for you. Limits your relationships if you think this way. It's just not true. And also, it keeps you around assholes. I mean, have you heard me tell you, and you know it for a fact, I gotta get rid of all the negativity in my life, Dr. V. And I tell you, get rid of your negative friends. Stop gossiping. Like, stop hanging out with that girl. Don't go out with these people who are gossiping and talking about work and stirring up trouble and drama. And you're all like, you're right, Dr. V. You're right. I gotta get rid of my negative friends. So why don't you then? Why don't you? Here's the answer. It's because you, deep down, unconsciously, you don't realize this, but unconsciously, you believe that it's not a good thing to be a rich person. So you're uncomfortable around people who've had any sort of success, right? And so you're going to put up with this. You'll put up with this, but I won't put up with it. I won't put up with it, right? All right. There are so many money beliefs, false money beliefs that we can go through. I can't, I don't want to hit them, I mean, I can't do them all, but I think these are the major ones that we need to um, shine light on in order for us to pro pro proceed to the next two videos. Does that make sense? The next video, I'm going to talk about how do you change your actual mindset, right? Like the thi things you have to do. So I'm going to tell you what YouTube videos I watched. What? Because sometimes, like I was broke. I, I had no money for books. I couldn't afford my own book, right? Um, I went, so YouTube is free. Which YouTube videos do you watch? Um, I had to get a library card I because it's free. And I went to the library and then I checked out books at the library. This is a, as a surgeon. I'm telling you, I was a surgeon who was broke, $4 million in debt, and I had to have a library card because I could not afford to buy books, man. So, and I'm telling you that just to hopefully to inspire you, to tell you wherever you are in your life, it's possible, right? So the next video, I'm gonna tell you what books to read, who to listen to, who to follow, what not to do, what, sh you know, to stop watching the news, that sort of tips. And then the last video is, I'm gonna talk about the opportunities. So the last video I'll talk about how do you make your t-shirts, how do you do um, uh, your book, how do you have an Amazon affiliate, how do you, how are you successful at network marketing, right? So network marketing is the best way for you to be able to accelerate your wealth, right? It, anyway, I'll get to that. I left this false money belief for the last one because it is super important. You guys understand this, whatever number one. Money won't, what guys? Buy you happiness. Or it's cousin, money won't make you happy. Who's heard that before? Money won't make you happy, money won't buy you happiness. My answer to this is, dude, Broke won't buy anything else. <laughs> Tell me what broke is gonna buy. What, like, why does this make it okay for you to stay broke? But Dr. Vaughn, money doesn't make you happy. Well, tell me how broke is doing for you. How is that feeling? How, how happy are you with that? It's weird, right? So you can't talk to people about this stuff because that's what they'll say. 
So your job is not to convince people that you're right and they're wrong. You already know that there are people in your life right now who will tell you this when you try to say, hey, I'm gonna start in my own business. I'm gonna try to start a t-shirt store. I'm gonna try to get better. Well, money won't make you happy. Well, you're the one divorced three times. How's that working out for you? You're the one who your kids can't stand you. How's that? How's broke working out for you? You know, money won't make you happy. You don't know where to shop. I mean, yes, it will. So the answer is this is false. Wrong. So we know this for a fact. Money will make you happy. Short term. Ah, ah. You've all have experienced this. You had to buy, like, I mean, if, if you've ever had a new car, you open the car. You, that new car smell is like the most expensive smell on the planet. But short term for the first two, three months, dude, don't, don't get my car dirty. Don't get my new car dirty. Every Saturday, you're out there washing your new car. Right? Why? Because for the short term, it made you happy. You started dating somebody. Made you happy for the short term. Dr. Vaughn, that's dating. No, 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 no. We talked about this, yo. I had to buy you a drink. I had to ask you out. I had to take you to a nice restaurant. I have to like buy a new shirt. That's all money. Your relationship's money, right? Money will make you happy short term. That's why people take vacations. That costs money. That's why you go to Disney World. That costs money. That's why you do roller coaster rides. For the short term, costs you money, right? That's why you buy purses, girls. That's why you have a new shoe addiction, girl. Because when you buy that new purse, that new outfit, you feel good about yourself, don't you? Yeah. You feel good about yourself. See, money does make you happy short term. Will it make you happy long term? Who thinks yes? Answers maybe. Maybe, maybe not. But everybody wants to find out for themselves. That's what Les Brown says. Everybody wants to find out for themselves. Money might not make you happy, but everybody wants to find out for themselves. Give me some money, Dr. Vaughn. Let me find out for myself. Will it make me happy? Is that true? Totally true. But what if you could have enough short-term happiness that it makes for a very good life? Are there wealthy people who've been divorced? Yes. Are there wealthy people who are stressed out at work? Yes. But are there broke people who are stressed out at work? Yes. Are there broke people that are unhappy with their marriage and their home life? Fuck yes. And I've been both. I've had, both have had a little bit of money and I've had a lot of broke. And I'm telling you, Given that everything's the same, I'm the same Dr. V, I love y'all, but I'll take the money. <laughs> and every one of you would take the money too. And if you're, if you're saying this, then you're lying to yourself. Why? Throw, I mean, you've all seen this. You're walking in the parking lot, you look over there, and you're like, oh my God, I think there's money over there. You see something green over there on the sidewalk? Like, what, what? You start, you know, you make a run over there, you like hip check your grandmother, knock your grandmother down, you reach, you know, that's my money! You reach down, you pull it up, and what are you hoping? What are you thinking right now? Oh, good God, please don't let it be a one dollar bill. Anybody, you know, anything bigger than a one dollar bill, Dr. V, that's what you're thinking! You're like, open, open your eyes like, oh shit, it's a twenty dollar bill! It's a hundred dollar bill! What you gonna do? Your ass is posting that on Facebook. You're taking a selfie with your $20. Found me $20 bill on the sidewalk today. You're all happy. You're not sitting there going, ah, it's only a 20. Throw it back. It's not like you caught a small fish. Just throw it back. I don't want it. <laughs> You'd be all like, five bucks. Yeah, baby, my lucky day. Now this shit gets crazy. Who's ever found a $2 bill? You found a $2 bill. It's even like more exciting than finding a $5 bill. I don't know why. You know, because you can just go to the bank and get $2 bills. They're just not that special. 
Oh man, it's only a buck. That's all right. You know, but you're still feeling good. My point is, it but it made you happy, dude. So the next time someone says this to you and tries to put you down because you're trying to make your life better, you say, that's fine. Let's do this test. Would you walk past this money on the sidewalk? No. No, they wouldn't. Right? Is that true? Totally true. Yes? Okay. Um, now, why did you have weight loss surgery? You wanted your life to change. That's the only answer. So, if you ever quote that, give it to Dr. V. The only reason why you had weight loss surgery is because you wanted your life to change. And you've got to change your financial life. That's a major issue, right? Two thirds, I mean, 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Two thirds are overweight. Something like 60% of Americans have less than 500 bucks in the bank. It's sad, okay? So we gotta work on this, right? I'll be right back with the last tip. This is what people don't understand about money. And if you don't take anything away from this video, this is the one thing that you have to take away from this video. You ready? Write this down somewhere. Money is an accelerant. Money is an accelerant. That's all that money is. Money is an accelerant, okay? By that I mean, if you're an asshole when you're poor, you're gonna be a bigger asshole when you're rich. <laughs> if you cheated on your wife when you were poor, you're probably hoeing around when you're rich. <laughs> Promise you, you're just, you've got a couple around on this lap. If you were greedy when you were, if you're miserly when you were poor, you're gonna be miserly when you're rich, okay? Now the opposite's true. If you've always been a giving person, you know, and a lot of you guys watch me always say you are. You say you always put other people ahead of your wants and needs and you always did what everybody else want, right? And that's why you got fat. Well, if you had money, you could actually do what it is you wanted to do. And your core is not to put other people ahead of you. That's not what I mean. Your core is a giving, loving nature. But now with money, you can actually give it to people who are worthwhile and causes that are worthwhile. You can give it to your church. It's an accelerant. It, it, it's an accelerant, okay? If you're a loving, kind person, if you have money, you're gonna be so loving and so kind. So all of my new friends now that I've met at this mastermind I went to, um, we've all become really good friends. They're like family now. And they're the most, the nicest, most generous, giving people, right? If your nature is loving and spiritual and kind, then money is gonna accelerate that for you. You're going to be able to love more people, love more animals, help the environment. You're going to be able to donate to your, char to your church or your favorite charity more. That's what money does for you, okay? It's not the root of all evil, it, you know, none of this other stuff, but it is an accelerant. That's number one. Number two, because of this, money will, this is important, y'all need to write this down, expose your flaws. Boom. I guarantee you money will expose all of your flaws, right? Your insecurities. This is the hard work I talk about. It's all connected, it's all related. Everything I've always taught y'all comes, I mean, this is a part of it because it's gonna expose your flaws. That's why these lottery winners lose all their money in two to three years. They lose all their winnings in a few years because all of their flaws have been exposed, right? Their insecurities, mistrust, the negative people around their lives, the takers that they attract, um, they can't stand up for themselves, right? So in order for you to get this money, you better start fixing those flaws, man. You better start already cutting out the negative people. You better start already like cutting out the diet sodas and the junk food. Because if you have money, 
dude, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go to like McDonald's and like just fill up with buckets of KFC, McDonald's, and just take it to everybody. Cause that's all you know in your head. You think that's big baller. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you know, I'm gonna get two buckets for the whole family. That's not big baller, man. That's exposing your flaws. Okay? I mean if you were always bouncing checks, dude, you're it's gonna be really fast when you start bouncing checks again. Now this is super important because this is the hard work. When why did you have weight loss surgery? Only answer, guys, you wanted your life to change. You wanted your life to change. And for it to change, that means you, you have to give up your old life. You have to let go, watch me, like, mm, let go of your old life. Let go of your false beliefs. Let go of things you thought, because the way you thought got you obese. Got you broke, got you sick, got you on your third marriage. Those beliefs are not serving you. They're not accurate. And you've got to be big enough, strong enough to say, I'm wrong. I need to let it go. I need to let these beliefs go so I can change into this new person. And money will be a part of it because money is the grease, the gasoline. That is what makes everything go in your life. And we can measure it. That's what's important, guys. I can't tell. I mean, people are like, well, at least I'm a good mom. Really? How do we know that? Your kids seem to hate you. They're rowdy. They don't listen to you. They come home late on curfew. Well, at least I'm spiritual. Really? Well, when was the last time you went to church? When, when was the last time you donated anything significant? When was the last time you went on a missionary trip? Mission trip? Well, well, at least I'm a kind person. Really? How do we know that? You can't measure that. Money we can measure. Money we can measure. We can fix it. Bank account going up or going down? Getting better, getting worse. What are you doing? What's not working? What is working? Do more of that, right? And when you start there, you eliminate. So that's a good point, actually. A lot of that fear, Dr. Vaughn, why can't I change? Why won't I let it go? What, like why, why, the old habits are coming back, Dr. Vaughn. No, why won't you let go? The answer is your mind is too cluttered. You don't know where to start. You, you have these false beliefs. You have this old identity. You just have people telling you different things in your head, in your ears. And it's just too loud in here. Amen? Give me some amens. It's just too loud, so you're scared. You don't know where to start. I'm telling you, start with money. Start with money. Start, obviously, if you're a weight loss surgery patient, you got to start with food, but food takes money. you got to get your money straight because you can measure it. And money doesn't care. It doesn't judge you. I love you very much. I'll see you next time. Hi, Dr. Vong here. If you loved that video, I hope you will check out Velocity2020.com. I want to meet you in person. This is my big annual conference in Vegas. It's amazing. It's not just about weight loss surgery, but it's about taking your life up to the next level. You're going to meet the best people, the best speakers, the best audience possible. You're going to really take your life up to the next level. 2020 is all about vision, clarity, and focus. We're going to show you how to find your vision, what you really want to do with your life, get crystal clear, clarity, and then find your laser focus to do what you need to do to have the amazing life that you deserve. Hope to see you there.